Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Corey, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we are going to be going over three separate things. The first one being where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar's location for today. The next one being all the different cycles with their collection sets. And the last thing we're going to go over in extensive detail is going to be the daily challenges so that you guys can make as much gold as possible here in Red Dead Online. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you guys where you can go ahead and find Mad Nazar's location right off the bat. And she is way down in New Austin by Plainview. Now, the quickest fast travel location will be at Tumbleweed for today. So make your way down there and down over to Plainview. Now, this is one of the more out of the way distances out of all of the matter Mazar locations, but hopefully it isn't too bad for you guys. And honestly, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is going to be the different collection sets and cycles. But before we actually do that, I just want to let you guys know that I do live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So definitely make sure that you guys are checking that out. All of my times that I do go live are posted on my website, which is GamerCorey.com, so that you guys can take as much advantage of it. I will be playing more Red Dead Online once a new update finally decides to actually come to Red Dead Online, but right now we're playing a lot of other games, and I do live stream on the other days that I didn't mention. Make sure that you guys are following me on Twitter, checking my website again, that's GamerCorey.com, or making sure that you guys are subscribed with bell notifications turned on so that you guys will get notified as soon as I do go live on other days that's not normal all right so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the different cycles and they are as follows now i do like to kind of go over the coins and the lost jewelry first just because you do make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time possible which means that less effort for you and whatnot but it does require a few extra things it does make sure that you guys have to have uh the field shovel and also the metal detector in order to collect all of those but the coin cycle is going to be a part of cycle number four. And then the lost jewelry will be a part of cycle number six. Now, the next four sets I'm about to go over, you don't even have to be a collector at all. And you can actually turn these all in at one time when you do be finally become a collector. But just keep in mind that you can only carry 10 sets of each before you can actually go ahead and sell them. So if you try to collect anything more than that, you're just going to be wasting your time because you're not going to be able to actually pick them up and carry them. Now, this, these are going to include the American Wildflowers, which are going to be a part of cycle number four. The Tarot Cards, which will be a part of cycle number six. The Antique Alcohol Bottles, which is going to be a part of cycle number one. And the Bird Eggs, which is going to be a part of cycle number two. Now, the other sets that you do have to become a collector roll for would be the Arrowheads, cycle four. And then the Family Heirlooms, which would be a part of cycle number one. Now, I do believe that doing like the hairdresser set this week, which is the weekly set for, for Mad Nazar, they're all a family heirloom item. So it's honestly, it's a waste of your time to only collect those three. You might as well just do the full collector set of the family heirlooms because you're going to make significantly more money instead of only just turning in those three items. You make the same amount of experience points, so if you're really only trying to get the experience points, by all means do that. But it shouldn't be what you're focusing on. You should be focusing on the money aspect because it's going to when you can fully get upgraded in the collector role you're going to make a ton of money and i am living proof of that as i have over one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, and i have for quite some time and a majority of that money has been made from doing the collector role but anyway let's go ahead and move on to the daily challenges for today now i don't look at these prior to actually getting into it however you can make 11 gold bars each and every single day there's a couple different requirements for that number one Having a 21-day streak of completing at least one daily challenge. It doesn't matter which one. Just complete one out of any of them. And then the other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have all of the collect or all of the rolls. And then make sure that you're a level 10 in each of those rolls. So that way you guys can make as much money as possible. or And gold as possible, to be honest. Uh, so that's going to give you access to 19 daily challenges. Seven of those daily challenges are going to come from daily general and 12 are going to come from the daily rule challenges. But you get the bonus from completing the general and everybody's daily general challenges will be the exact same every single day. And there's always one daily challenge that is actually easier to complete and quicker to complete than it actually takes you to actually log into Red Dead Online, which honestly is pretty amazing. Let's go ahead and look at which one is super, super simple for today. And... Okay, um, non-player enemy kills while in cover. You can do this pretty much anywhere. 
couple different locations I'm going to give to you guys. Van Horn, which is north of San Denis, is a really good spot for that. You just get shoot one person, the whole town comes after you. Same thing with Thieves Landing, which is south of Blackwater. Two really good places for that. Otherwise, if you guys can find like bootlegger missions or go through Maggie, that's a great way to do that. You could actually do this through uh, bounty hunting missions, or you could even do this uh, with gang hideouts. So it's kind of completely up to you which way you like to do that, but that one should be pretty easy, and it does not matter which weapon you use. Five Indian tobacco actually is picked. Uh, there's a lot all over New Hanover. You can find actually quite a bit uh, around Emerald Station. Not the Heartland Overflow, but more around like this area. Otherwise, there is quite a bit in the back of Valentine, and I mean back by Valentine, like over here, there's actually a couple trees like right in here, and then just basically go along this ridge and into the woods, and you should be able to find some even along this path right here. You might be able to find some as well. They're pretty easy. There's a ton of them right around Valentine. You should have absolutely no problem with getting all of those completed. Uh, the next one is just eating five herbs. If you want to eat any tobacco, you definitely could do that. So those two could definitely go hand in hand. Otherwise, you can eat any herb you really want to. It doesn't really matter. Just eat five herbs. So that's probably, honestly, the easy, easiest one that you could possibly have today. If you're really good with the sniper rifle, then killing a flying bird with the sniper rifle should be pretty easy. I like to go after the bigger birds. We're looking at, like, the owls, um, condors, hawks, eagles, turkey vultures, things like that. But it's up to you. If you're trying to get better at sniper rifle, then just use whatever you really want to. But the Carcano rifle would be really good, or even the rolling back block rifle would be good as well. So it's up to you. Uh, cooked season exotic bird. Yesterday we actually had to pick and pluck two pelicans. That's going to give you the exotic bird bean that you need. And then you have to season it with either thyme, oregano, or mint. And thyme, oregano, or mint, if you guys go along the Dakota River Valley... Um, just a little bit south of Valentine, along this entire stretch of road, um, either side doesn't really matter, um, but majority on this side, because I actually spend more, more of my time on this side of the river, you can find tons of those herbs, like again, thyme, oregano, or mint, but it doesn't matter where you guys really go, because they're one of the more common herbs anyway, just because they are used for seasoning. And then you can go to any of the campfires, there's one located in Valentine, you have one down in Rhodes, a couple in San Denis, you have your camp, obviously. There's one in Blackwater. There's uh, one south of Tumbleweed at uh, Solomon's Foley, which is pretty much straight west of where Madame Nazar is at for today. Any campfire will do. If you can find one just like in a gang hideout or wherever, it doesn't matter what you do with that one. You're good to go. Uh, so the rest of them are three free roam missions completed. Um, so these ones should be like the Stranger Danger missions, really. We got idiots again. Um, so any of the Stranger Danger missions would work actually just fine. And then you guys can actually just go ahead and get any of those completed. There's lots of strangers all around um, the the world. And wow, they're higher levels. So they're just flat out morons. That's cool. Okay. So you're just going to be a bunch of idiots. That's That's awesome. I love people like that. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And let's see. All right. Well, maybe if we can get away from the assholes, that would be greatly appreciated. Wow, they're, they're just high-level idiots. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to what the next ones would be here. And let's see, we can do uh, basically three-player kills with pistols. Just make sure that you guys are using pistols inside of the, uh, the showdown mode, um, and you guys should be good to go. Wow, these guys are pretty much just flat-out douchebags. I'm, I'm actually just going to go ahead and parlay with them just so that I can continue with the video. And then I'm going to go and kick their ass later because this is fucking annoying. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the rest of the daily gen the daily challenges. Honestly, griefers, if you guys are a griefer, you guys are idiots. I, I, that's all I'm going to say. If, this, if that's the way that you guys play in free roam, then you deserve to have everybody press charges against you. You deserve to be kicked for griefing and everything and whatever. And, and actually, one of the things on here is... You can actually report players for actually 
let's see like look at this you can go in here and when you report them it is actually disruptive behavior that's what that would be considered disruptive behavior so if you guys are doing griefing go play a damn showdown mode for god's sakes go do something else besides pissing around with people's uh stuff here in red dead online that's all i got to say and for somebody to be a high level like that and doing that kind of bs that just shows what kind of low life they actually are anyway now that that's out of my system uh we have to complete one special moonshine recipe so just go to the moonshine shack and start one you actually don't even have to complete it you just have to make sure that there's none brewing right now and then go ahead and start that you can use either the argarita the creek plum or the caribbean rum to get that started Drink your own moonshine. So if you've already created a batch before you sell it, go to do that. Otherwise, if you start the special moonshine and it's a strong one, then you can do those together. Uh, we have to have two moonshine bar drunken player interactions. Just, you know, have a good time. Uh, oh, they left the session. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not going to be finding them later. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> Uh, so just have a good time and fight some friends in, get drunk, have a good time. Uh, the next one is going to be the trader roll. We have three camp stews eaten. So just go ahead and eat the camp stews. And then, yeah, there's actually, you can just eat the base quality stew at the camp and you're going to be just fine. Otherwise, you can always season it or spice it up with whatever you really want to to make it a little bit better. Otherwise, the base quality stew will actually work just fine. We have to have 20 total donations to Crips. The best way for this one is actually like the feathers. Flight feathers work really good, but any feathers, just because you get an abundance of them anyway, especially if you're going over to like ducks and geese for like animal fat and whatnot. Uh, we have to have two goods sold to a local buyer, just two. Doesn't You don't have to sell a full 100 goods, just sell two goods to a local buyer. Um, it seems like a lot more people are doing the trader rule lately. lately. I've been seeing a lot more enemies popping up as far as like the rival traders which I obviously don't do anything about because I think that griefing is a very low life thing to do um, as previously stated. Uh, we have to, next one is going to be the collector rolls. Total of six collectibles collected. Uh, three of them can be the lost jewelry. So these two go together and then you can find three with a shovel. Some of these might be the lost jewelry. Otherwise you might have to go for like the coins or the arrowheads. It doesn't really matter, but just pick any six and just go after them. And they can even be ones that you randomly find on NPCs, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the last one that we have is the bounty hunter roll. We have two bounties brought in from West Elizabeth posters. You're looking at um, Wallace Station. Not Fort Wallace, but Wallace Station, Strawberry, and Blackwater. And then we have to have three bounty targets lassoed from horseback. So just lasso that from horseback. And then you can actually let them go. And then you can take them down with bolas. So these actually can all be done pretty much together, which is pretty amazing. Um, typically, on average, it takes about three bounty hunting missions to get all these completed at one time. So that's usually a minimum of a quarter of an extra gold bar, which is pretty amazing. But typically you can get up to point one well you can get up to point three two gold bars per bounty hunting board but on average i'd say point one six is kind of the the way to go but anyway if you guys did enjoy the video or anything don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated and also guys don't forget to check out my live streams every monday wednesday and friday other days to be announced on either twitter my website or make sure you guys subscribe to the channel with the bell notifications turned on but I honestly, I hope these videos do help you guys out. It would appreciate, I would really much appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section if they are help, very helpful or what you would like to see a little bit differently. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.